Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I am here with two Portland, Oregon all-stars. I'm really excited about this one. I've been checking it. I should mention it. I was checking out their email. I mean, their website. It's phenomenal. Ray and Joyce saying, how are we doing? Pretty We're good. good. Yes, Thanks for having us. Um, yes, I'm really excited about this one. Again, you guys are here locally here in the Pacific Northwest. Um, what you guys really do is, is some pretty remarkable work uh, with some pretty awesome uh, content. Uh, but I'm not going to talk about it. I'm going to let you guys get into it. But first, Roy, I'm going to start with you. If you go ahead, Ray, I'm going to start with you. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Who is Ray? Uh, yeah, um, I am a filmmaker right now, but um, I my background was in finance 15 years ago, um, and um, and then Joyce she'll talk about this in a bit too. But like she was an engineer, and when we got married back in 09, uh, we decided we wanted to take whatever energy we had uh, being in our 20s to put into something creative, but also make an impact in the world. And so we started a film production company just to start telling stories, um, and then we've been doing that for like the last 15 years. Been very blessed with that. I yeah, and Joyce? I'm Joyce Sang. Um, I uh, am the executive producer at Only Today right now, so I work with um, our creative team to to create content and and make films. Um, but yeah, like Ray mentioned, I have uh, we both kind of took an untraditional path to film. Uh, I have a mechanical engineering degree and was in um, kind of R and D engineering for a few years uh, post college. Um, until I realized I didn't want to do that forever um, and kind of quickly made a pivot uh, out of that uh, and into, into the creative world and f first via photo and then video. Yes. And now, now the, what you guys created uh, here essentially is, is only today. So only today, uh, but tell us a little bit about only today. What is it? What does it do? And, and how'd you guys kind of start it? Man, that's a great question. Um, I'll 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 start with the name uh, because Joyce and I have left uh, past like professional careers to build our filmmaking career. We wanted to be to mean something, um, and so the name "Only Today" really is just a quote from Mother Teresa. Where I'm gonna butcher this, but uh, she had a quote saying, uh, "Tomorrow's not here yet. Uh, yesterday." Ha, uh, is gone you only have today and I took that like we need to make the impact make an impact and make our stamp in the world um, starting with like the first for the first day we jump into filmmaking and everything we do is kind of in service to that um, and then hopefully make make a living out of it um, and so we've been very fortunate to have found clients um, who really align with our purpose-driven uh um, kind of our purpose-driven business of telling stories um, and telling stories that just need to be told and finding a way um, to make a, uh, to get paid for that. And so we do work with uh, a lot of also uh, media broadcasters and large like Fortune 500 companies uh, that bring us on to do brand film, to do commercial work. And those are all like amazing projects. Um, but we've been very fortunate that I think 90% of our work is still about storytelling. Uh, we'll oh, wow. do, you know, the shoe commercial, the coffee commercial here and there, but a lot of it centers around a lot of like human interest stories and people doing awesome stuff around the world that, and we get to just kind of peek into their lives. So how did like, let's, let's kind of, so one of the things that's really interesting, folks, I, if you, I would really encourage you guys to take an opportunity to check out the only today.tv website. Uh, oh, and if you, if you, Forget that. By all means, please uh, visit the shades of e.com, sign up for the newsletter, and we'll have this information. But it's really, really fina uh, fascinating what you do because you're able to take film and make a story out of it, but in a very short, short amount of time. How, do, how, does, how does that like feasibly, how is that even possible? And how much recording is done for a you know, 30 second film? Yeah, that's interesting. I think what is considered long or short is really changing quickly. Very easily, true. Right? Like I feel like five years ago, even um, a two or three minute film would be considered a short film. And in today's world, especially in advertising and in with social media content, like that is a long form thing. Yeah. Um, so we do, I mean, you know, there are times when we do 15 second things, 30 second things. And um, it's hard. I'm, you know, not going to lie. It's, it's hard to try and squeeze in 
some form of storytelling and have it still feel authentic in that amount of time. But, um, you know, we always start with listening. Um, we always start with listening and really trying to understand what this is, um, both listening to our clients and what they're trying to do with this project, whatever that may be, as well as listening to whoever's on camera and what their story truly is and really trying to distill that down sometimes to just one or two lines. Um, and it's hard and it's been a, and it's been a learning and a work in progress as attention span seems to get shorter and shorter and shorter these days, um, really trying to narrow things down and focus on like, what is the heart of that story? I, I will add to that, Gabriel. Uh, one thing I was thinking about recently and just like thinking about this podcast too is yes, like some of these pieces, 15 seconds, that might be like the final piece, 15 to 30 seconds. But you had asked like how much filming happens and like some some of these projects still take two days for a 30 second video. Um, and Incredible. while we want to distill stories for the audience and like whatever the attention attention span is, what we don't want to do is um, fast track the process of putting together those stories um, because there's people behind the camera and in front of the camera and we're just not going to show up, intrude on someone's life uh, for, and to just to film them. Like we sit down with them kind of like this and we'll have a conversation just to make sure that the story we put out there is authentic, that they're aligned with it, that everyone's aligned with it. And when everyone walks away from a, a, a film production wanting to do it again and think for us, that's a big win. Um, we don't want to, uh, we believe that process is just as important as the final product or video that comes out. Yeah, that is, that's a, such a great point. I think that's one, you know, a lot of folks need to take into consideration. It's not about the the quantity of the things you produce, but it's about the quality that you produce it in. Uh, and, you know, one of the things, Ray, you mentioned is, is, you know, learning your guests, right? Learning who you're working with. That's exactly what we do. You know, as I mentioned before we got on the air, uh, my nonprofit Latino founders just started a business accelerator program. And yesterday, our first kind of cohort uh, for this, or for the first meeting for this new cohort, the first thing we did was really just let's learn each other. Uh, what is your name? What do you do? What's your background? What is your business? How did you start it? Right. Uh, because to your point, these essentially these advertisings are, are, it's kind of like your, your elevator pitch, right? You have a very short amount of time to disseminate your information, what your goals are and how you, how you started it, but you also need to do it in a very clear, concise of way and also humanize yourself in the process. But then you guys kind of take it and another step forward because you also need visuals with it, right? How does how does like take take me through your guys's mindset when you're putting something together and you're thinking about the end user uh, experience or in uh, kind of engagement with your films? How does your guys's thought process go and like, hey, we need to make sure we're engaging? What kind of tactics things do you guys think about when you're thinking about that? Uh, there's a lot of things that kind of go in. That I imagine, yeah. That um, you know, but as, again, with like the the short attention span these days, is really trying to find a good hook. Um, that could be something visually, just very captivating. Um, it could be a soundbite. It could just be like dropping you into something. It could be a controversial statement. Really, kind of thinking through from a like from an audience standpoint, and then mashing that with like what is true to this story, like what actually makes sense here. Um, and I think there's a, there's a lot of different ways to, to go about it, but I think um, a lot of that happens in what we call pre-production, in all of the planning and all of the, the discovery work and a lot of the, the creative building beforehand, before we show up on set, before we push the red record button, it's like, what are we trying to say and how do we best say it? Um, you know, sometimes, you know, and for us, that's, um, you know, that can be done through storyboarding, that can be done through um, kind of creative exploration with whoever it is on the other side. Um, and sometimes, sometimes we plan for something and we show up and, you know, another opportunity presents itself and we grab that. Um, and I think a lot of what we do is going into things, being as prepared as we can so that when we show up, we have that room for spontaneity and for, for pivoting, because, um, if, the, if anybody's ever been on a film set, you know, um, there's always something that doesn't go quite as planned and and we've learned to roll with it adapt to it and make the best of out of out of those situations and uh sometimes they're better than the stuff that we come up with sometimes we're presented with um options that um we didn't know about when we were when we were planning it 
Um, just to add to that, um, there and not to discount like uh, like other people in film production. I mean, it's just like the equipment's very accessible, and then like you know, so much content is being made. Um, and when people reach out to us, uh, we like to think it's not because like we're great like filmmakers. Joyce and I like kind of came up like learning learning to shoot and learning how to be like really quick on our feet and think on the fly and adapt like what Joyce was talking about. But we feel like our value comes from that pre-production of thinking about if we only have 15 seconds to get someone um, to share a message, we maybe get less than one second to convince someone at the beginning of a film whether they keep watching or not. And a lot of our pre-production goes into like, what is that quick hook? What is how how do we get keep people engaged through that first quarter second and then three more seconds and hopefully they'll watch the next uh, the last eleven seconds, um, and that just I think comes from both a lot of work uh, before showing up on set just to really think through that and then as soon as we get on set and we're in someone's home or or we're in a studio, things change problems happen. And then our experience comes in of like, okay, well, if this happens, we will immediately pivot and this is what we're going to do because this was what worked versus like taking a gamble that this may or may not work for a client. Um, so there's just like a lot of, um, I think, value in kind of like that, that planning process. And hopefully when you show up and this never happens, but hopefully it's a smooth drama free shoot, but something always breaks or something always happens. On set. <laughs> something always yeah. happens. Yeah. I do want to. I do. I do want to add though. The I think there's a really important piece in that process is building a rapport and trust with the yep. folks that Very you're true. working with, um, with the client, with talent, with your crew, so that everybody has an understanding of your intentions and the process and what we're all trying to say. And so when when things come up. Um, it's a, there's a healthy discussion um, and there's, there's a lot of trust in that process. So nobody feels like it's, it, you know, it's um, that we're all doing this together. And I think that helps a lot when, you know, in, in, in executing a plan that, you know, is, is complicated. Filmmaking is, is one big giant problem solving exercise. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and I imagine the the trust building is so imperative because, you know, right, you kind of alluded to it earlier. Um, you know, sometimes you might show up on a set and the the actor or individual you're working with might actually have a different uh, view of what the end product should be. And trying to find that common ground is so probably sometimes difficult. But to Joyce, to your point, it's about creating that trust and respect and really understanding like, hey, you guys are the filmmakers. I'm going to come to you because I, I understand, you know, the expertise and, and you know how to find that hook. Because, folks, you know, Joyce was mentioning uh, the attention span continues to get shorter and shorter. And a good example of this is YouTube. Uh, if you go to YouTube uh, previously, you know, a couple of years ago, uh, even in Instagram and in Facebook, the reels, the, the time amount for reels has shortened. So for example, uh, if you go to YouTube and you post a reel, it has to be under 60 seconds to be considered a short. If it's over 60 seconds, it's considered a video. Uh, and so I've been trying to be mindful because I have hundreds of reels from all these different uh, discussions, right? And, and to you guys' point, I take I spend more time editing those reels than the actual conversations, right? To making sure we find the right piece, uh, find the right hook, have some visualizations at the end. So I have an end screen when it's on YouTube and so on and so forth. And so there's a lot of things that go into this. Uh, now, one of the things you, Joyce, you mentioned too was the, the pre-planning stage. Kind of take us through that process when you're thinking of idea and you're working with one of your clients. Do you guys kind of do like a storyboard and visuals or is it more just an organic discussion? How, how, does, that, how does that plan kind of materialize? It's, um, it always, like I said, it always starts with, with listening and going back to like, what are the goals? Who's your audience? What are you trying to say? Are you trying to get them to do something? Are you trying to get them to buy? Are they trying to click donate or just learn more? Like, what is that thing that we're, we're going after ultimately? Um, and then doing a lot of research and listening to figure out what is the strongest story angle that is. And that sometimes involves research online. There's a lot of pre-interviewing that we do just to understand what we're working with. Yeah. Um, and then, and then we get into things of, um, 
what are the themes that we're exploring writing what we call a pre pro script that isn't a, you know exactly what we end up with at the end but just so everybody has an idea of what we're trying to say and then we can kind of come around that to then find what are the shots what is this like what does that storyboard look like um and really trying to start like reverse engineer that and start with what the goals are what are we trying to say and then back it up from there i think it's really when i started at least earlier on many years ago you can get really excited about shots and visuals and like how cool that is if we can just do this or shoot here and that and um you know learned over the years it's like really hard and takes a lot of discipline to not jump to those moments in the process and really just dial it back to kind of a one-liner of what are we trying to say mm -hmm. and then letting the story letting your collaborators give them room to um, provide their input and their suggestion because I mean it's just you know right now you're talking to two of us but there's so many other people in the process that yep. contribute to this and they all have their expertise and they're so much better at what they do than you know even Ray and I like we're producers and we bring people together to do this but um, really working with the team to kind of solve that puzzle solve that puzzle and figure out um, where do we start how does that build in the story and like how does it how does it end um, and that rings true whether it's a 30 second commercial or a five minute Super Bowl tease it's it's all kind of the same thing of working with working with really good people finding really good collaborators and coming together to to make something awesome yeah you know you know what's interesting about that is uh, so folks that are listening, you know, when you think about your business, you're trying to create the ideal marketing profile, right, for your consumers. However, Joyce and Ray have to do it every time differently because, again, their clients have different uh, consumers and they have different goals. And, and understanding the goal is so important because then you actually plan your tactics around that goal. Okay, now you have your goal. Okay, well, tactfully, how are you going to accomplish that? And operationally, what do you need to tactfully accomplish that as well? So those are things to kind of take into consideration. Uh, and sometimes you might realize, you know what, I actually cannot this is a lofty goal that tactfully and operationally we not, we cannot do so we need to uh, scale it down a little bit as well and having those you know crucial conversations is so important because it's, it's interesting because you guys are essentially doing it for each one of your clients over and over so that's that's a really kind of fascinating thing now ray you mentioned earlier too you know um sure you and joyce have been doing this for some time but you guys had to start somewhere so let's take a step back <laughs> Talk about kind of like your entry into the film world. And why did you guys decide, you know, kind of get into becoming producers? Man. Um, okay. So when we started back in 09, when we decided, when we made the decision, we're just going to try storytelling, jump into filmmaking. YouTube 15 years ago wasn't the same YouTube it was today. Not as many resources. Uh, right now, you can learn anything on YouTube back then. YouTube University. Um, I love it. Yeah. And back then, uh, even just trying to figure out how to use like the newest cameras that are coming out, no content, very little, right? You're we're on forums, not even uh, <laughs> like Reddit or anything. It was just like message boards and forums trying to learn. And so we found ourselves in a position where we had to self-teach ourselves how to use a camera, how to edit, how to tell a story. Um, and we took a gamble on ourselves where we decided when we basically overnight quit our jobs and took our savings, which we're going to use to uh, put uh, uh, as a down payment for a house and instead put that towards education, taking a lot of workshops, buying equipment, just licensing software, getting all the tools we needed so we could, in our little apartment, just start practicing and trying. And so it was, we just took a year to squeeze in that those 10, that 10,000 hours of like learning and failures. Um, and we... We grew up in LA, so fortunately with LA, it's year round like event and wedding and like filming season, kind of unlike the Pacific Northwest in many ways. And so there were a lot of people that were willing to um, give us an opportunity to film their event, do, do some photography, all of that um, year round. And that allowed us to really like fail and fail very quickly um, and learn uh what we what we uh what we're what our strengths were and learn how to build a business around filmmaking yeah i think that um one of the things that i 
look back on now is that a very, I don't know, that's just like, I mean, I guess it was part of the plan, but at the moment it was also like, well, we quit our job. So like, we got to do, we got to figure this out. We got to <laughs> figure it out fast. We got to figure it out fast is um, the, 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 the iteration loop of learning. We made sure that was as short as humanly possible. So there was a time where we were shooting every week, editing every day. And so we learned very quickly what worked, what didn't work. And that, you know, also it was the same in, on the business side. Like we would meet a lot of people, talk to them, try and get jobs and kind of making that loop really short and learning, okay, like this thing probably shouldn't say that or like probably shouldn't do this. And this worked really well, so we should do it again. And really um, squeezing in those 10,000 hours, like as fast as humanly possible. Um, and we went from doing kind of just like free things and test things to $10,000, $15,000 jobs in about a year, mm -hmm. um, which was, uh, I think, I mean, it's just part of that trajectory and that path and that journey of um, starting, starting with yes, that's one of, that's one of our yeah. core values and something that Ray um, has instilled in me over the years is start with yes and figure out how to do it and do it together and do it with good people. Um, yeah. You'd be surprised how far and how fast you can go. Mm -hmm. um, can I share one more thing? I of think. course. It, um, so there's the filmmaking, video production part of it. Um, an amazingly fun thing to get into. You can get really creative um, and you can do so much with it. But um, I also knew I didn't want to be a starving artist. <laughs> yeah. um, and so, sure, like storytelling was one half of it. But I also knew that if we wanted to build a sustainable company, if we wanted to build an organization or be a creative that people not will not only hire once, but keep bringing back over and over again, uh, we had to figure out what it meant to run a business, whether as a solopreneur, uh, or now we have a team of like 14, 15 of us um, and learn putting just as much energy into that. Uh, and that meant some very simple things that I think a lot of people still are trying to figure out, like uh, being pr uh, prompt with emails or just um, or always um, re reading in detail and replying in detail and like just um, acknowledging people and listening to them. And so just like, I think a lot of light soft, soft skills, obviously they're like business skills of learning how to read a balance sheet. Like, am I making or losing money? Yeah. Uh, and either is fine. As long as we knew when we were losing money and if that was intentional or not. Um, and little things like that um, helped us really get to a point where we could actually yeah, within a year be able to pay our bills and make a living um, and, and very quickly, make back a lot of that money we spent um, that we had put out there to learn and to buy equipment. You know, that's, that's a great point, Ray. I think that one of the biggest challenges of entrepreneurship, especially for those individuals that are just kind of getting into it is truly understanding cash flow. Uh, mm -hmm. Because I think a lot of, there's a lot of hidden fees and a lot of hidden costs that we don't take in consideration. Uh, the amount of electricity, the gas you're using to travel locations, the marketing flyers, right? All of these things, once you start taking them in consideration, and then you, you put that into your operational budget and you're like, holy crap, you know, I'm actually in the red, right? Uh, and, and you know, one of the things, Joyce, you mentioned too, is the different iterations that companies goes through as they scale their business, right? Uh, there's there's always uh, opportunities to pivot because, you know, understanding the market, like you mentioned, YouTube 15 years ago is not the same as it was today. And so, you know, 15 years ago, it probably wasn't in your strategic best interest to focus on YouTube, but now it's like, well, you should, right? Everybody, like you mentioned, is YouTube University. Now, with that said, there's, there's certainly some challenges that come with trying to scale the business. So Joyce, we'll start with you first. What were some of the challenges you remember starting this, starting to scale this business? Learning the business side of it. I mean, I think the funny enough, neither one of us went to film school and I won't speak for Ray, but for me, that part was not terribly complicated to learn. Like, yeah, there was, there's a lot of skill in figuring out how to do lighting and camera and lenses and all that stuff. But that for me, at least came relatively, it felt straightforward to me. Like there's a lot of hours you put in, but like, yeah, there's a, it's, there's a, there's a way to do that. Um, the, the business side, the, the leadership slide that 
involves humans and humans are complicated and different and everybody has, you know, has a different experience. And so uh, for me, I think the some of the challenges that I faced and we faced early on is understanding and learning how to, how to lead a team, you know, on set and the office, how do you, um, how do you work with people who you might not want to work with if it's a client or a talent that you didn't get to choose or, or a, um, a difficult situation? Like, how do you handle that? And that isn't something, I don't even think they, I didn't go to film school, but I don't even think they teach that. Oh, yeah. Um, so I think for me, it's, it's, it's that side of things is how do you build relationships? How do you nurture relationships? How do you navigate um challenging times together how do you build trust like all of those things that have nothing necessarily um not specific to filmmaking just in general of working with people and building a business that I think were some of the the bigger challenges up front and you know they still exist every day very true Ray same question what are some of the challenges you remember kind of building this business Over away. So my background was in finance. I was in, I was like a junior analyst. Had a fifty percent of your or whatever doubling your money or whatever. So it's all about the money side, um, and it's just like figures on a spreadsheet. And so I had to figure out that if I want to build and scale a business, how do I take these the spreadsheet extras came from me asking myself and I forgot when was the first I forgot the first moment I had to ask myself this but was like what how much uh am I willing to bet on myself or ourselves on this business. Like if we really believe we have a business model here, then do we start taking leaps? And sometimes taking leaps mean you prematurely hire folks on, or you start investing into certain equipment, or um, sometimes it might mean if there's a, you know, 70% chance this client might want to work with us, is it worth just jumping the gun and spending a thousand dollars to just fly and to meet with them in person, just to make sure we're all in alignment with no guarantee of them being our client or a return, I guess, the way I see it. Uh, and that has played out. Not all our bets um, have really have uh, panned out the way we expected, but a much, um, the ones that have, the chances we've taken on ourselves and bet on ourselves have been a 10, 20 fold return. Um, and I'm, so that it, that story about just like taking the bet and spending uh, two grand to go see a client, um, that was 10 years ago, uh, almost 10 years ago, where just a random, not random, this uh, former intern of, of mine from my previous company had reached out and he was working at uh, Meta or Facebook at the time. And he was like, hey, I think I think we have this project. We think you're the right fit. Um, can you meet with us like the day before Thanksgiving? And I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is this is probably not gonna go anywhere. But someone took the energy and the time and to reach out to me. So if I really felt like this was worth pursuing, uh, I need to show up the way they would expect someone to show up. And so <laughs> bought the flights, flew out uh the day before Thanksgiving, met with a couple of people, and then that was 10 years ago and Meta today is still our client. Um, and it's just been nonstop like projects, all sorts of work we've done with them. Um, and so it's just like those little bets on ourselves and just really if we has has allowed us to uh, to scale and I think scale quickly. Yeah. You know, I, this that's a perfect kind of segue into this next question because I think you essentially kind of unintentionally or alluded to how you did this, but how did you guys build your brand to begin 
you know, accepting the clientele that you have. Nike mm -hmm. is part of it. Uh, you know, you mentioned Meta. You got some really large uh, corporations that are your your clients. How did you build that brand and scale your business to where it's at today? You want to take that, Joyce? Yeah, I mean, I think everything goes back to building relationships. Um, we always look at every project as a long-term relationship like mm -hmm. we yeah it has to be successful everybody has to be happy walking away from it but we don't you know we're not here for a one-time deal like what can we do to be a actually a true a truly good production partner for you as a client like where can we add value um and we <laughs> I think sometimes complicates things because we not everybody in the production world operates the same way. And, um, and, and, you know, we we're trying to, we find a balance with, um, you know, how, how many hours we work and, and things like, and, and what we spend on set. But a lot of times, you know, we try and bring in value um, that doesn't necessarily end up on a line item in a, in an invoice. And we, and the, and the, and the whole goal behind that is to, build that trust and have people understand that, yeah, we do good work. So do a lot of other people, but what else, what else are we adding to this relationship? How else are we helping you as our client move up in your organization or achieve your goals? And that I feel like has been, I mean, not necessarily um, something, I don't think it's something that like you can just list on your website as part of like a, Hey, this is what we do. Um, but actually following through, and that's why we have some of these very long-term clients that have been with us and continue to call us, you know, well over a decade, um, year after year for things, you know, as big as the Super Bowl and as as small as maybe just an internal uh, internal communications film that they need to do. Um, either way, I mean, I think what we often do is just try and foster those relationships and be a great partner. Um, yeah, um, just to tag along on that. So I think relationships, uh, like Joyce said, is super important. Like we have Meta as a client really because I took the time to get to know and build a relationship with an intern. So even though we stopped working together, um, uh, he kept me in mind when the, when he like, um, got promoted up at Meta and was able to make certain decisions. And so, I mean, that was like probably like a three, four year span of time. Um, and then also taking a chance with our, our clients, especially in film production, people always want to like do what's new or see what's next, right? And try to stay in, in front of the trends. And then even getting into the sports world uh, really happened because uh, some producer at the NFL, you know, saw some of our event work um, online and really called to be like, would you guys be interested in like trying to film some football? We don't really have that that much money. It may not be worth your time. And then the answer is like, yes, of course. We don't know where it's going to go, but we instead, um, let's just show good faith. We show up and put out our best work um, with no expectations. And, and the, at the end of the day, what I feel it's lost in a lot of conversations when it comes to pitching and like trying to get the right client is at the end of the day, like even these large fortune 500 companies, the client is really still one person within this large organization that's trying to do their job. They don't represent all of Apple or all of um, the NFL or whatever it is. They're trying to do their job and they're tasked with just delivering whatever it is, a story, a marketing video, whatever. And our and we approach it as we're not working with Meta, we're working with um, so-and-so. We want to be friends and we want to see you succeed and we will do everything in service of that. And I I think I've got like some a lot, a lot of question marks when bringing this up. I'll, I, I love, this is how we approach it is money uh, and the profitability is not even on our list of priorities. I just believe if you, do good work and you build relationships, Your par our partners, our clients will find a way to make sure we're paid because they want to make sure we're around. Um, and that has played out um, over, over the last decade plus is focusing on people 
uh, and then people move within from one organization to another. And our goal, uh, our hope is like they'll remember us um, when they when they're at when they're VP at another big company. And that's really how we've been how we've grown our clientele list. <laughs> No, that's, yeah, that's so a I great think, point. Yeah, so I feel like even our brand is is less of, I mean, sure, the filmmaking has to be there just to get your foot in the door. I feel like the the barrier of entry is lower and lower as we go. Like every, you know, you can shoot with your phone and like all these things that didn't exist. You know, we were just, we started on tape. <laughs> um, but <laughs> it's, it's less to us. Is I feel like the product has to be good, and that is just a starting point. I don't, I don't associate that with OT as much as the brand of the brand that I think of that I hope other people think of if they know us. And if they know only today is um, that we're great partners and they yeah. we do good work, but we're also good people to work with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I really like what you guys said there, because I think at the end of the day, your guys, your goal is not to find value for your consumers and your clients because they already know what they consider valuable your goal is just to basically exploit that value and help them bring it to life uh and you know you know ray i think you brought in a great point you know with folks that if you work in the corporate setting like i work in healthcare i have a lot of connections with a lot of vendors but they have no connection with my organization their connections with me because it helps me support my role either a crm i'm talking to or some data mining software whatever it is right their connection is with me. And so that's a really good point, folks, when you're thinking about, uh, you know, even if you're looking at a larger organization, um, identifying any employee in there and building that relationship and networking, you know, networking is, is so important uh, because you'll never know who you're actually talking to. You, like, you know, we mentioned earlier, the elevator pitch at the beginning of this conversation, you might be sitting next to a venture capitalist or a VP at Meta or somewhere um, that is interested and they, they might then take that story and like, you know, I kind of want to learn more about that. But again, having that quick quick synopsis of what you're doing because you know Joyce mentioned it perfectly uh, our attention span is continuing to decline more and more and so making sure that we have a, a message that is is relevant and it's also meaningful but also kind of relays it has to personalize you as well which is very difficult to do in a very short time frame uh, but that's why you know Ray and Joyce take hours and days to do a 30 second film uh, because so much time and energy goes into making these things uh, really come to life and making it about that individual and that person and, and their true life goals and their aspirations and things of that nature. Cause man, it's, it's, it's probably not very easy to do. I imagine, you know, now, you know, one of the things, um, you know, talk about building the brand, we talked about challenges. I would love to, I'd love to be interested in what are some, some things that have come easy, some things that maybe you really truly enjoy, like, oh man, I'm so glad I'm in the filmmaking. Joyce, we'll start with you. What are some of those things that either super easy or super enjoyable? Oh, uh, great question. Um, I really love being behind the camera. I, you know, I don't, I don't do that much these days anymore. Um, there are, we've made a lot of great connections over the years and there's a lot of very talented, uh, folks out there who, who can lens a beautiful film, but that is where, you know, and when we first started, we did everything, you know, you, you produce, you direct, you shoot, you edit, you wipe the counters like you literally take out the trash <laughs> we, we do everything when we start and now you know with the bigger team we've kind of grown and kind of focused on our on our respective areas but I started behind the camera and I really really love that and that um I don't know it felt natural it, it I don't want to say it's easy there was a lot of learning and there still is there's always a lot of learning and oh, yeah. still going on but that is one of the things that I really enjoy and kind of miss that a little bit. I try and get behind the camera a little bit, at least a couple times a year uh, on projects that I really enjoy or really care about. Uh, and that's, I think that's one of the things that I, that overall in the grand scheme of things came a little bit easier for me. Nice. Ray, same question. Uh, man, no one's asked this before, but um, there's two things I love. And yes, I wanted to tell stories, but I knew personally uh, when we were younger, I, I love to travel and I wanted to build community. Like I wanted to just meet people. Um, and literally as we kind of jumped into filmmaking, that's exactly what happened. We had clients willing to pay us to travel halfway around the world um, to do a story, to film, to work with some amazing people um, and tell their story. So I got both almost all at once was the travel aspect. Um, uh, and like, I mean, just for 
context, Joyce and uh, Joyce hit a million miles like uh, maybe a few years ago just on like one airline. Wow. Uh, I'm very wow. close. And so we did a lot of traveling. And I like to joke, but the reality is I have two, three hundred friends around the world because we've been able to spend two, three, four days with them, them sharing their story, kind of like we're doing with you now. And you just build a relationship there. And then we're just connected through Facebook, Instagram, whatever that is. But anywhere we travel, we have someone if we need help. Um, or And so that's why uh, now a lot of our clients like really love working with us because when they know we can get a film team into almost any corner of the world if needed, uh, just because we built enough of a community where we have people trusted uh, that we trust um, that can show up for us. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I really, I really like that sense of like, you know, building community and, and getting out and traveling. Uh, the same, likewise, my, my wife always makes fun of me. It's like, every time we go somewhere, you meet somebody. I was in Kansas city. I saw somebody at the airport. I knew we were down in a bend. I saw somebody there. We were in freaking London. I'm like, Holy crap. I know that I used to work with that guy. She's like, you got to yeah. stop. You really got to stop. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry. It just, it just <laughs> happens that way. But I mean, you know, it truly is the importance of networking. You know, it really is such a strength uh, getting out there and, and truly being involved in other people's communities. Um, you learn so much about the world out there. You get you get more creative with it. You're, you're able to share those experiences. I mean, that's how Starbucks started, right? Steve Jobs went to Europe and really wanted to create this kind of uh, cafe style uh, organization here in the States. And then originally it was not good, right? He actually failed originally and then he had to go back and then he made it successful. So um, traveling is always is a good opportunity to really gain exposure to different ethnicities, different cultures, uh, and different different color schemes, different patterns. Like again, I was in Europe a couple of weeks ago, and I got to tell you, folks, I want to start dressing European. Like I want to wear the khakis and the button up shirt and stuff, and like have the sweater over my shoulders. I thought it would look like I was I was really impressed. But you know, there's a lot of great advice you know entrepreneurs receive throughout the years. But I would love uh, Ray. We'll start with you. What is what is some advice you would provide to an aspiring entrepreneur? Oh man, um, I would say uh, advice is um, pick up a book and read. There's so many amazing um, books out there um, that just like so much knowledge out there that's written that you're not going to be able to to capture in one three minute even 30 minute YouTube video. So I would say as soon as I started kind of reading and this is like business books, um, coaching books, um, it just kind of expanded almost overnight or over how many hours of reading expanded my view of what's possible in the world because someone was able to take all their experiences of running a business or building a brand or uh, their life experience and put it in front and, sh and sh put it in front of you um, so I would I would say start there. Uh, it's huge. Uh, bro it'll broaden your horizons. Like you said, it's kind of like the equivalent of traveling. Uh, you just see the world differently uh, once you see it through someone else's eyes. Uh, and then the second advice is um, don't don't prioritize mo uh, money when you're first starting out. I know that's really hard. I know sometimes it comes from a um, a you have to, uh, there's a lot of hurdles to that. Um, but I, my background's in finance and I've seen, um, people just talk about hundreds of thousands, millions, billions of dollars, just kind of thrown back and forth. It's just, just thing that's, that's government and society has created. And it's probably one of the few things where it's essentially just limitless in this world. There's the government's printing money, right? So, but we are, I think taught, uh, at least in our society to treat it like this very limited resource. And so you make decisions based on that. And I've seen a lot of uh, friends and colleagues who wouldn't take a risk on something because it would cost them ten, twenty, hundred dollars $100 to take that risk. But we talked through it and I'd be like, well, if this pans out, your return on this, you're going to experience for the rest of your life. And what is that $10 now to take someone out and pay for their cup of coffee and take a meeting and like just fly somewhere and meet someone and you'll get to build community, um, travel and, you know, show up for someone that instead of on a Zoom call. Um, yeah, yeah, very good. And so I, I would say building community um, has been 
just the probably the biggest thing that has helped Joyce and I because you find like-minded people and they want you to succeed and they will also show yep. up for you when you need help. Um, yep. And that has allowed us to really build a business surrounded by people that just are pushing us to succeed yeah. and a- asking for nothing in return except for friendship. <laughs> yeah, very, very good point. Joyce, same same question. Uh, what, what advice would you give an aspiring entrepreneur? Two things come to mind. Uh, you're, if you're starting out or, you know, just, just a refresher, um, you got to be great at what you do and turn out a good product or a service, but don't, for, don't neglect the, the communications, the customer service, the human side of why somebody should pick you and your business for whatever their need is. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot, there's a lot of talented filmmakers out there. There's a lot of other businesses out there that can create beautiful content like we are not unique in that way um as much as i like to think we are like let's be realistic <laughs> there is a lot of options out there and regardless of what line of business you're in what industry you're in those things of uh, being a good partner having good customer service uh, being really buttoned up with your communications all of that is just as important if not more important than what you're actually selling in at least in, in my opinion, in my opinion, and in our experience of why, why a potential customer or a client might choose you. So don't forget to invest your time and your money and your resources in that side of it, as much as you are investing in your product line or your equipment or whatever that is like, that is all important, but that's not the end all be all. Um, and the other thing that jumps to mind is to learn how to delegate and empower those around you. There's only so much one person can do. Yep. Um, and maybe maybe that's different if you choose to be a solopreneur. Like that's that's one thing. Uh, but if you want to grow, you want to scale, you want to um, create an impact beyond just yourself and and have a have a position and contribute to your community. I feel like that, you know, the faster you learn to delegate and surround yourself with good people and then empower those people to grow and learn. I think that benefits everybody. It benefits your team, um, the people that you work with, your client, the end product is better. It benefits your clients. And ultimately, I think that um, just brings on a lot more opportunity than if you're trying to do everything on your own. So um, that often, I think, is is takes a bit of learning for entrepreneurs who many of us started on our own. We do everything ourselves. And you're, you know, you're trying to be responsible with your cash flow and your money. And you're like, when do I hire? Do I bring on somebody else? And, and those are all hard questions and there's no like one right answer. But when you have the opportunity to, to empower somebody else on your team or even somebody who's not on your team, just build, do that goodwill and and give somebody a hand, you know, yep. what's the, the proverbial, like send the elevator back down, you know, how can you lift up other people um, and just see where that goes? I mean, it, it might not necessarily come back to you, but putting out that goodwill in the community um, can only do good things. And, and within your own organization and your own team, uh, learn how to delegate, uh, open your, open up your time and your mind to what you do best and let, let the folks around you do what they do best. I love it. Some great advice. So again, folks, build a community. I think hopefully uh, you folks that are listening to the podcast feel you're part of the Shades of Entrepreneurship community. All right, because we have a lot of different entrepreneurs that come on the show uh, and uh, learn from other people's experiences. You know, get out there, network with folks, understand what they're doing, what they're not doing. Uh, You know, to Joyce's point, um, you know, maintaining a loyal customer and, you know, quality is better than quantity. Uh, because the cost of a customer acquisition is so high that you really want to think about your your sales funnel and, and get those individuals down to being a loyal customer, right? Like uh, Ray mentioned, you know, connecting with the individual from Meta. Now they now they've been their clients for several years, right? Uh, so building those lasting relationships is important, but also making sure, you know, as Joyce mentioned, following through with good quality products, uh, making sure you're communicating back uh, in a timely manner, um, you know, being very mindful of of the differentiations of definitions. So for example, if you say, hey, I'm gonna be right back and you actually are not back for a week, 
you know, somebody's somebody might perceive I'll be right back in five minutes. So make sure you're very honest uh, about what you're doing under promise over deliver kind of thing. So like, hey, I'll be back in a month and you're actually back in a week. Right. Uh, so think about that now. Now, Ray Joyce, for those folks that listening, if they want to get in contact with you, interesting to learn more about uh, your team. How can they where can they find you? What's the email site, social channels? How can they get in touch with you? Yeah, I would say the two best places to uh, start is onlytoday.tv, our website, or our Instagram, which we are pretty active, uh, which is onlytodaytv. Uh, that's our handle. And so start there. You can find us. Um, and we, uh, in, in spirit of like building community, we are also open to just like talking to other filmmakers, entrepreneurs, whatever that is. Um, and it's really the reason why we're, start opening ourselves up to just being on podcasts. Um, and we appreciate like what you're doing, Gabriel, just like also storytelling and um, connecting people and building community. So we're at fortunate, we're in a very fortunate place in our career where we want to really pass the baton down and, and empower um, new entrepreneurs and business owners um, because we've been the recipient and benefited from that from our mentors. Perfect. So folks, again, if you, uh, uh, it's only, uh, only today.tv. And if you forget that website, you can also subscribe to the shades of entrepreneurship newsletter by visiting the shades of e.com. We'll have this information on the newsletter the week before the episode airs the week, the episode airs and the week after there will also be a dedicated blog post to this conversation, as well as a dedicated page with the transcription of this conversation and the audio version of this conversation. Roy, Joyce, uh, Array, Joyce, you guys have been phenomenal. I really do appreciate what you guys are doing. Um, honestly, I think it's it's really cool how you're able to take a thought and make it into a story that's impactful, that moves. Like you sometimes will see a commercial or advertisement and it's like, oh man, that actually moved me like emotionally, like I'm I'm invested now, you know? And I think that's uh, that's a really good thing for people to think about and, you know, getting out and networking and meeting with other people that have different experiences than you is only gonna help you continue to grow uh, personally and professionally. So I always encourage, you know, get out there, meet with people, network. And as, as, as Ray said, build a community, uh, you know, and, and the best way to build Build a community is actually being present in the community. So uh, don't be just a Zoom call, uh, be actually feet on the ground. So folks, again, thank you so much for tuning in. You can subscribe at the Shades of E. Thank you and have a great night.